Hi, so in this video I want to talk about the Python structural pattern matching that came out in Python 3.10. If you're used to other languages like C for example or Java, you may be aware of something called the switch statement. And this avoids having to do a bunch of if l if statements in your code. So Python structural pattern matching essentially allows you to do the same thing. But it's actually more powerful than a plain simple switch statement and hence the name Structural Pattern Matching. As usual, the notebook, the fully annotated Jupyter Notebook, is linked below, and it will also contain the links for all the different resources that I talk about, like the PEPs, that basically give you an overview of what the Structural Pattern Matching is, as well as a tutorial PEP that was published at the same time. So all these links are in the actual notebook that's linked below, and that's in the GitHub repo. Okay, so let's dive in and let's start with a simple match statement. So let's go ahead and create this function. Let's call it def respond. Um, and let's say we're going to pass it a uh, argument and the argument name is going to be language. And now we're going to match on this value here, language. We're going to match on language and we're going to say case. So very similar to the case statements, the switch statements and the case statements you may have seen in other languages, including things like SQL, which has, you know, a, a switch essentially with a case. And let's say for case Java, we're going to return, hmm, coffee. Then let's say we're going to match on case Python and here. And you know what? I'm going to go copy paste this code instead of boring you with you watching my bad typing and let's put it all in here. So basically I'm going to return a different value depending on what the language is. Before 310 I would have had to use an if l if, right? Or you could have used maybe single dispatching. But uh, the if l if construct is really what you would have used. Like if you know language equals Java, do that. L if language equals Python, do this. L if etc. So here we don't have to do that. We can use the match and the case and then we can say, well, respond when the uh, language is Python. All right. I'm not scared of snakes. Now we can also change it and let's say respond go. What does go say? Um, so if you want to use the go language, then collect 200. If you've ever played Monopoly, you know what I'm talking about. Now, what about this case underscore here? What does that mean? Well, that's essentially the else. If you failed to match on anything before, then go ahead and use this one. So if we say, hey, respond to COBOL, for example, then what would we get? I'm sorry, right? It's returning this value over here. It dropped into this case statement. So this case underscore, that's this special kind of variable name that we use there, underscore, just means match everything, you know, just match it in case nothing else is matched. Otherwise, it will, you know, it will stop matching. Once it hits a match, it stops matching, it doesn't continue. So here we were able to define a default match pattern by using this underscore. So this underscore is also sometimes called a wildcard in this case. So this is very much like the plain switch statement found in some other languages. But this is where things get interesting because pattern matching can do much more than the simple example we just saw. For example, you can have multiple pattern matching. Let me go ahead and copy this from the notebook so I don't have to type it all. But you can see what I've got here. I'm going to say match language on Java or, this is what the pipe means here, it means or, JavaScript, right? So if the language is Java or JavaScript, then return this. If it's Python, return this. And if it's something else, return something else. So now I can say respond. And we could say Python. And we get that. Or I can respond, let's say, to um, another language. Respond. Uh, let's say go and of course I have now the default that gets returned. So we have this or pattern matching using the pipe character. Now let's look at one more example but this time matching multiple values. 
So suppose we have some kind of command language, and I'm just making this up, right? For driving a remote controlled robot in a maze, picking up and dropping items as it moves around. Now our robot is very simple. It can only move in a few directions and one step at a time. So to move forward three spaces, we would have to issue the command move forward three times. Move forward, move forward, move forward, right? That would work move forward three. Or we could say move left and move right or move backward. And then we also have the verbs pick and drop. So that's it. That's all the commands we have available for this robot. Move forward, backward, left and right, pick, drop. So how are we going to, let's say, interpret the commands? So we could start, let's assign some symbols to some commands. So I'm again just going to copy that from the notebook since I don't want to retype it all. So these are our symbols. If we take a look at that, Basically, F, you know, for forward has this little forward arrow. B for backward has the backward arrow. Left goes left. If you think of it, you know, turn on its side, but that's left, that's right. And then pick and drop. Okay, so I just want to use these symbols because I'm not going to be driving a robot. What I want to do is I want to convert my commands that I'm issuing to a description of what the robot actually did. And I'm going to use the symbols to show what the robot actually did. So now we could do something like this. I Again, I'm just going to copy paste this from the notebook. So what does this up function do? It takes in a single command and it basically matches the command to these cases. Move F, move B, move L, move R, pick, drop, and then something else where we'll actually raise a value error in this case saying we don't support, right? this particular command. So when we have this, we could issue commands to the robot by saying up move L. And when we do that, the robot moved left. Now, multiple sequences of commands we could do by using a list essentially, right? So we could go ahead and say, and again, I'm gonna just copy paste that. So we could issue a list of commands by putting them one after the other in the list. And you can see we have move forward, move forward, move left, pick up, move right, move left, move forward, drop. Okay, so exactly the commands that we did. Now we can use something called capturing matched sub patterns to simplify our code somewhat. So let's start with this. And it may not look like a simplification initially, but you'll see, we're going to work on this. So let's see what this match command does. It's saying, I want to basically, I want to match, move, and then something else, F, B, L, O, R. And I want to capture that as something called the direction. If it wasn't move, then maybe it was pick, in which case I'm just going to do the pick and the drop and then the, you know, the, the else essentially, something that we don't understand. So you'll notice what's happening here. We're still going to issue our command but now it's going to be two commands to do a move forward. It's going to be move F and move B, move L, right? So now we would have to do something like this up. And now I'm matching a list, right? This is what I'm matching here. You'll notice that the whole expression here is in a list. So I'm matching a list. So I need to pass in a list. But the first element of my list is going to be move. And the second element might be, let's say, move left like so. And so you'll notice that it captured it correctly. What happened? Well, it saw that this was a list starting with move. So it said, great, I can handle that. But then it said, oh, go ahead and look at the next element of the list, which could be any of these. So this is the kind of the grouping that I want. I want F, B, L, O, R, right? So I want to match on that. And if you do match on that, I want to get the direction, which is going to be what one, what it was, right? What was the value? I want to have that inside a variable called direction. And then I can just use direction directly from there. Now, if I try and do something that doesn't exist, so up, let's say move, and let's say I want to move uh, some other thing, let's say you, right? Let's say I'm thinking that's up. Well, now I'm going to get the value error, right? The command you does not compute. Now, of course, the matching here was on a list, but it doesn't have to be a list because we can also match directly on strings. So we can also say up, pick, 
right? That's, that's going to work just fine. It's going to match the pick. And so we get the pick. We get that little pickup arrow. Now, if we try something else, if we say up.fly, again, we're going to drop down to our default catch-all and we're going to get the value error. Okay, so that's that's okay. It's it simplified the code a little bit, right? Because now we didn't have to do all these different ones over here. Move F, move B, move L. We just said, hey, pass it in as a list with move as the first item and then one of those values. And we could handle that. But it's kind of tedious now writing the commands. It would be nice if we could write commands like move F, F, L, right? And then uh, pick and drop and then move, you know, right, left, forward, whatever. It, it would be nice to be able to issue commands a little bit more simply where we don't have to repeat the move every time. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to copy the code from the notebook. Okay, so what does this do? Well, again, we're matching on a list. So we're going to look for an input, the command, to be a list with move as the first element. And now we're going to say we'll accept any number of elements thereafter in that list. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab the, the directions now. It's going to be an iterable. And we can look at every direction in directions, and we can look up the symbols for that direction. Obviously, if the symbol doesn't exist, then we're going to get a key error here because it's going to say, well, I don't know what that symbol is. Remember, the symbols is what we had all the way at the beginning, right? It was just this dictionary. So if it doesn't find the symbol in here, it's obviously going to generate a key error exception. And then we're going to do the pick and the drop just as before and our else just as before. So now if we do this, we can write an operation this way. We can write a little program for our robot. We can say up. And then we're going to pass in move and we're going to say move forward, move forward again and move left. And then the next operation uh, we're going to do oops, wrong place to put the comma. We're going to say up pick, let's say. So we're going to pick up the object, whatever it is at that particular point. Then we're going to do another move. Um, and this time we're going to move, let's say, right and left and forward. And maybe our next command will be to drop. So whatever we picked up, we're going to drop like so. So this is our little program for our robot. And when we send this through, you can see that it interpreted things kind of correctly. We got the stuple return back. Um, right, which was the move forward, forward, left. Then we had the pick operation. Then we had the move right, left, forward. And then we had the drop operation. But we kind of have that error, right, that's going to come up if we try and do something like up um, and then let's say move and let's say up, right? We don't have an up in that dictionary. So we get the ski error exception that we were expecting. We would rather just get our custom value error. It'd be nice to always raise just the same value error that, you know, the command does not compute if, if we have that key error, not that. So one of the things that we can do in the pattern matching, let's go back to this one over here. And this, this is just to show you how powerful this pattern matching can be. So we have the smooth directions. But what I can do is I can actually put something called a guard on the case. In other words, basically, I can say, we'll match these things, but only if this situation, if this expression is true. So I'm going to say, I'm going to only actually accept the match. Not only do I have move and then any number of directions, you know, specified after that, but I also need to make sure that the, if I look at the set, of all the directions that got passed in, right? So I'm going to take all these directions, which is going to be an iterable, but I could have F repeated multiple times and left and right repeated multiple times. So I'm okay with that. And I'm going to make sure that that set of directions is contained. And so I can use the less than here. This is nothing new. We've seen that how to do set containment keys. So I'm going to look at the keys of the dictionary. So this basically is a guard. It's saying you're going to match when you see move and anything else. 
but only if the everything else that you passed in as a set is a subset of keys. And I guess you could make that less than or equal to. Uh, but in this case, we know that we have two other keys, pick and drop. And now let's see what happens when we issue our command. If we do this up and we're going to say uh, the list, uh, move, and we're going to say move up. Now we get the value error, right? Move up doesn't compute. Why? Because it did not go into this code over here. We didn't satisfy the gound. Why? Because up wasn't contained, right? In the, the keys. We now fall, therefore we don't match. We don't match pick, we don't match drop. So we fall down to here. So the if statement is the gound will only let the case block execute if the match is true and if that, ex that if expression evaluates to true. So both things must happen. You must match this way and this must evaluate to true. That's the gout. Now, there are many other ways we could have done this, probably better than this, but this was just to illustrate how the multiple value matching can work and how you have a lot more of you know, a lot more functionality than just a plain switch statement like this gout. There's many other things you can do with this match. So I urge you to go ahead and read the tutorial PEP, PEP 636. Again, the link is in the notebook. And that is Python's pattern matching. Thanks for watching.